In today's video, we'll check out a feature available in Raspberry Pi OS called Raspberry Pi Connect. This new beta feature allows you to easily connect remotely to your Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 5 using Pi OS Bookworm from anywhere. No need to open any ports on your router, the connection is secure, and allows you to open a remote shell or desktop session directly from a web browser. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Screen sharing via Raspberry Pi Connect requires the Wayland Windows Server, which is only available for Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, which is available on the Pi 5, Pi 4, or the 400. It isn't compatible with Pi OS Lite. If you'd like to check out the written guide on Raspberry Pi Connect or learn more about Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, I'll place links below. If you've already installed Pi OS, after you've assigned your primary browser during the initial installation, you may have seen an option to enable Raspberry Pi Connect. It's disabled by default, but it can be easily enabled. For a full tutorial on setting up a Raspberry Pi 5, please see the link above. However, Raspberry Pi Connect was introduced after that video and why we're talking about it now. Unless you enable Pi Connect during installation, the desktop interface will not show an icon in the upper right for Pi Connect. To enable it, click the Raspberry Applications menu, select Preferences, and Raspberry Pi Configuration. Click the Interfaces tab and enable Raspberry Pi Connect and click OK. In the upper right, you'll see an icon for Raspberry Pi Connect. Now click on the Raspberry Pi Connect icon and click Sign In. If you already have an account, you can click the sign in link right here. And if not, you can create one by entering your email, password, re-enter your password, and then enter your name. Agree to the terms and conditions, verify that you're human, and click continue. Then check your email and verify your newly created account. Here I'll log in from a PC with my email and password. Enabling two-factor authentication is a good idea so I'll click that button. If you already have an Authenticator application on your phone, you can just scan the QR code to set up the Raspberry Pi authentication. And if you don't have an Authenticator application on your phone, what I use is the Microsoft Authenticator, which is available for Android and iOS. Just scan it from your phone and install from the appropriate store for your phone. Then scan the QR code for Raspberry Pi Connect and enter the six digit code. Once done, click the Verify and Setup button. You'll also be provided with a recovery code in case you lose your Authenticator app. Be sure to put this code somewhere safe in case you need it in the future. Now we're all set. Going back to the Pi 5, we'll select Sign In, then enter our email and password and click Sign In. If you set up two-factor authentication, enter the six-digit code here, verify, and sign in. You'll then find a link to the install guide. I'll place a link in the description below. It has a lot of information from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And remember, this software is beta and likely to receive some updates and new features. If you're not immediately prompted to name your Raspberry Pi, you can go to connect dot raspberrypi.com forward slash devices then give your pi a name and click the create device and sign in button at this point the pi is now available for remote access i'll click the view dashboard link and we can see our newly registered raspberry pi we no longer need the browser window open on the pi so let's go ahead and close it in the upper right, we can see the icon is no longer grayed out, and it's ready to accept remote connections. Next, I'll show you how to remotely connect to your Raspberry Pi. For the first test, I'll open connect.raspberrypi.com forward slash devices and log in with the credentials that we've already discussed. Keep in mind, there is no need to open any ports on your router or any further configuration needed other than what we've already discussed. This will, of course, work from anywhere, including work, home, while on the go, etc. 
Additionally, you can set up any number of Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 devices for remote access. I'll be using just one today. Simply click the drop down on the Connect Via button and here you can select Screen Sharing or Remote Shell. I'll select Remote Shell and this will provide us with a terminal window to our Raspberry Pi. Any commands that you would want to execute locally on the Pi can now be done remotely just as if you were sitting in front of the Pi. The communications between the remote device and the Pi uses a secure and encrypted connection. In addition to a remote shell, you can also have a full remote desktop experience by selecting the screen sharing option. You'll find a button to disconnect as well as copy the clipboard from the Pi, paste to the Pi, and additional buttons that you may need at the bottom for the control, raspberry, alt, escape, and tab keys. Let's try the clipboard. If I load up a text editor, then enter some text and select it, then click the copy from remote button, I can then open notepad in Windows and paste the text. We can also go in the opposite direction and copy some text in the Windows clipboard, then paste it directly into the text editor on the Pi. When it comes to watching a YouTube video remotely, the video quality is pretty good. However, the audio is inaudible. I'm not sure if this will change in the future. It would be great if it was supported. But yes, pretty much anything you want to do remotely from your Pi, you can including browsing the web, launching and running productivity applications, utilities, and much more. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Raspberry Pi Connect Beta. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this new feature and how you are or plan to use it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to talking with you again very soon.